Earth Rangers Live. It is so great to see all of you today. My name is Sarah, so thank you so much for joining us today for another live. And a big thank you to our sponsor, Honda. They're the only reason we could come to you today live. So thank you so much to them. A big shout out for Honda because they're the reason we are here with you today to meet another one of our animal ambassadors. So I'm here at Earth Rangers. We have animal ambassadors and we travel all across the country teaching students all about them and a little bit about how we can protect them. So today, I don't know if anyone's heard me say this, but I feel like I say this all the time. I love reptiles and today we are meeting a reptile, another one of our reptile friends, we are meeting a snake. So I'm very excited about that. I hope you guys are. Give me a thumbs up if you love snakes, a heart. That would be great if you even love snakes more than I do. Um, and while I'm talking to you guys, please feel free to use those emotions and those reactions. If you like something I say, a thumbs up. If you're surprised by something, there's that one that I always use because I'm always like surprised about everything anyone ever tells me. Um, so I'd love to hear from you guys as I'm out here. We also have comments, questions, ask them as I talk about our snakes. I'd love to see if you guys have any questions and every so often I'll be stopping and pausing to answer some of those questions as well. And reversing that, I'm going to be asking you guys some questions. So I definitely want to hear from all of you. So please let me know if you have any questions and then please respond if I ask you a question. So I want to see what you guys know about snakes. I've a lot of you love snakes as much as I do. So I'm excited about that. But of course, we've met a lot of different animals. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of our other Earth Ranger animal videos. There's so many. I can't even name them all. But if you are watching and you've seen some of them, please comment and tell me which ones you love the most. Which animal ambassadors were your favorite? Maybe there was one that surprised you. You were really surprised that you would find so many interesting facts about them. And I'm thinking of one animal that did that for me. I don't know if you've seen Millie or three-banded armadillo. Very unusual animal, and there's so many interesting things about them. So please comment. Let me know about any animals you love to see, you love to hear about, um, and maybe we'll even try and get them on for another round two, and we'll get them doing something a little bit more interesting, like an animal behavior. So we really want to hear from you guys, so please comment and let us know. Now, before we do bring out our friend, we are going to tell you a little bit about Earth Rangers. We'll give you some background. So we are a conservation organization. But what is so unique about Earth Rangers is that all of our members are actually young people, young students, and they're working incredibly hard to protect animals and the environment. So if you are an Earth Ranger who is watching with us live today, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for all your hard work. And please keep sending in those photos and stories that you guys have. We love to hear and read about all the things that you guys are doing right now. And especially right now, we have a bunch of eco challenges that you can actually take photos of and you can win a mystery surprise pack. So definitely take advantage of that. Start doing those eco uh, activities and send that in to us because then we get to hear about them and maybe you'll even win something in return. And you can find all those details in our video description. So have a look at that if you haven't heard of them yet so far. And so far, I've got a lot of people saying hello. So hello, everyone. Welcome again. My name is Sarah. I'm coming at you live from the Earth Rangers Center, and we are meeting some interesting animals so far. But today, you're meeting one of my favorites. You're meeting a reptile. More specifically, we're meeting a snake. So let me bring out our guest for today. She's a beauty, and she's a long one. We've got Phantom, our black pine snake. So give me a thumbs up or a heart if you think she's beautiful. Look how long she is. She is a gorgeous girl. These snakes can only be found in one spot. It's actually southeastern United States. So this is more in states like um, Mississippi and Alabama. What's the only place you can find them? Oh, I'm going to see if I can unravel her a little bit. There we go. And in fact, they are one of the longest snakes in North America. And you might not be surprised because you can see she's kind of winding herself around me right now. Uh, they can be about four to seven feet in length. So she's almost as long as I am tall. I don't know if I can even show you how long she can get. You can see she's definitely much longer than my one arm and she can reach all the way to the floor. So she's pretty impressive. Now I'm going to ask my first question. I want to hear from you guys. Who is watching? What kind of habitat do you think 
black pine snake living. Black pine snake. What kind of habitat do you think we would find these beautiful animals? This is phantom. And don't think too hard, but what kind of habitat would you find these guys? And while I'm waiting, I just want to see who's watching. Give a couple of shout outs. We've got Lisa saying she loves snakes. Thank you, Lisa. Leilani says, hi, hi, Leilani. Thank you so much for joining us today. Lauren, hi, Lauren. Thank you for watching. Lauren saying, I love Chavez. I know, Lauren, you're not a fan of snakes. You love Chavez, and he's another animal who's one of my favorites. He was our Tucanet we watched earlier on. Uh, we've got Liam saying, my favorite ER animals are Millie. So Liam was like me, loving Millie. And Blue, I'm glad you're liking the reptiles. Let's see. So we had asked about uh, phantom here. What kind of habitat do you think he would be found in? He's a black pine snake. And Bailey says, in the forest? That's a good guess. I'm liking that. Lisa's saying underground or pine forest. I'm loving it. Sadie says, Floyd says hi to fellow snake phantom. I love it. So Floyd is out there too watching. That's so good. But I see a lot of you have got it. You find black pine snakes in pine forest. You don't have to think too hard. That's why they got their name. I'm going to wrap her around a little bit so you get to see her entire body here. Kind of roll it around. But these things have adapted to a lot of variety of different habitats. Let's see if I can find her head again. I thought it was her head, it was her tail. So here you go. These guys have adapted to live in a lot of habitats. Not only can you find them in pine forests, like their name suggests, but it's not uncommon to find them in places like grasslands, shrublands, and even more desert and arid regions. So they can be found in a lot of different places. And there's a lot of varieties of pine snakes. So they come in many different shapes and colors, you can see the black pine snake is best known for this dark color. Very beautiful, and it makes them really hard to find. Not just for us to find, but also for their predators. However, if a predator does come really close to them, they have a very unusual way of protecting themselves. So these guys actually mimic rattlesnakes. Yeah, they actually have copied them. They figured out how they can do it. So what they'll do if an animal is frightening them, getting a little bit too close, they will puff themselves up and they start to shake their tail. Now, unlike rattlesnakes, rattlesnakes actually have these modified scales at the end of their tail that make that rattling noise. Well, Phantom here doesn't have that. But she has figured out that she can blow air really rapidly out of their lungs and create that same sound. So in that way, he sounds and looks like a rattlesnake. And more often than not, animals are just going to quickly run away because that is something they do not want to mess with. So rattlesnakes, they are a venomous animal. And so most predators are going to definitely say goodbye when they see one. However, black pine snakes, like phantom here, is non-venomous. So she has no venom, and the only thing that she can do for predators is she is known as a consortium. So if she finds something tasty to eat, what these guys do is that she's going to wrap her body around them and squeeze really tightly. That's what constrictors are best known for. And every time their prey releases their breath, they're going to squeeze a little bit tighter. So that's how they're able to get their prey and suffocate them. And then once their prey is not moving too much, then that's when they're going to take a big bite. Now, it's hard to imagine that a snake could constrict their prey, but they are very powerful animals. So most people don't even recognize or realize that these guys are all muscle. You might have noticed, I'm trying to keep her up here, but she is very strong. So humans, like me, I only have about seven to eight hundred muscles in my body. So that's, that's not bad. I'm, I'm doing my best. Well, Phantom here has over 10,000 muscles. You can see she's definitely got me uh, there. She is a strong animal, and that's how she's able to hold on to her prey so tightly so they do not get away. Now, I think we've got a couple of questions. Lisa asks, is she slimy? That's a great question, and often I hear people asking that. They kind of think, especially because she's got that steam to her, they think she's slimy, but she's not. She's actually very dry to touch. And this is because these animals have a skin, these scales all over their body, and this is what protects them from
from their environment because a lot of these snakes live in pretty hot places. So this is keeping in all their moisture and protecting them from any bacteria. But they are not slimy. Great question, Lisa. And if you have them, please feel free to ask them. I see Lisa also asked another question because she's saying she's sticking out her tongue. And I bet you guys think that's pretty rude, don't you? You think she's sticking out her tongue at you? <laughs> Let's do some rude again. Now she's not because she's like, uh oh, there's the camera. I don't want to be rude. Yes, that's so nice of you, Phantom. But in fact, she's not sticking out her tongue to be rude. She's using that to smell. So right now she is sticking out her tongue and she's smelling the air around her. She's sensing her environment. And that's what most reptiles use is their long tongue. They're going to take all these air particles outside of the air using that tongue and then bring it back into their mouth so they can figure out what it is that's around her. So right now, she is sensing her environment. Maybe she's giving a nice little pose in the camera. Nicely done, Phantom. Way to go. All right, let's see if we can get her back around here. I told you about those muscles, right? I'm working hard today. All right, so Phantom, once she catches her food, I have to say, is just they eat their food in a pretty characteristic way. And I bet most people are aware of this, that snakes will swallow their food whole. I don't know about you, but for me, I, especially when I was younger, I used to think that was so strange, especially for an animal that does not have any limbs. She doesn't have any arms, she doesn't have any legs. So how does she swallow her food whole? Well, snakes have hundreds of inwardly curved teeth in their mouth. So these are arranged in rows and they can move each row independently. So they can literally walk their food into their mouth. And that's how they're able to swallow their food full. They also have pretty stretchy jaws. So if you guys feel right where your jaws meet, maybe you'll feel those in the back of your chin, where our jaws meet, well, for a snake, they can stretch that out so they're able to swallow food in one spot, which is pretty cool. And to give you some perspective, because that may be seemingly hard to imagine, but they can swallow things that are about three to four times the size of their mouth. So if we were able to do that, we could swallow something the size of a basketball. Cool. And yeah, that doesn't sound too appealing. And to be honest, it doesn't sound too appealing to Phantom. But Lisa asked a very good question. What does she like to eat? So she definitely doesn't like basketballs. But let's find out from you guys. If you had to take guess, what do you think snakes like Phantom here would like to eat? What is their main food source? So I want you guys to think about what you know about snakes so far, because that's definitely probably close to the answer that I'm thinking of. And to be honest, she's not a pussy girl, so there's, there's lots of different answers you could give for this one. But what do you think Phantom, our black pine snake, would like to eat? And for those of you who are joining us, thank you so much. My name is Sarah. I've got Phantom wrapped around my arm right now, our black pine snake. We are coming at you live from the Earth Ranger Center. Please ask your questions about her, or if you have any comments, we'd love to hear about it. I know some of you are a little freaked out by snakes, but thank you for sticking in and watching, because you never know, you might find these guys pretty fascinating, and I hope that's what you take away from this. But right now, I was asking, what do you think Phantom would like to eat? And I got some really good questions, or answers, sorry, mainly the same rodent. I like it. And one of those examples is Tasha said a mite. Yes, that's a good one. That's definitely something that we feed our snakes here at Earth Rangers. Lisa is saying a bunch of different ones, all great. Rats, gophers, mites, and eggs. Absolutely. She's going to eat all of those different things. They are carnivores. So all of that sounds really good. They're only eating other types of meat. But snakes, they have pretty slow metabolism. So that means they don't have to eat very often. In fact, there are some species of snakes that can go months without eating anything. The phantom here, she kind of eats about every once every week, and it kind of depends on how she's feeling. Sometimes it's even less than that. The snakes and reptiles, they're very old animals. So I don't know if anyone knows what I mean by that, but they've been on this planet for a very long time. It's about 150 million years old, which is one of the reasons why I love them so much, because they were on this planet when dinosaurs were on this planet, which I think is fantastic. They lived among dinosaurs. But a lot of people don't realize they are very unique animals. 
So uh, even though they do resemble their other reptile cousins, there are some differences. And one of the biggest differences has to do with their eyes. I'm going to do something that my friend Bailey always does. Let's see if you guys can shut your eyes. Shut them nice and tight. Touch them so close. Okay, you stand them. Stand them. Are your eyes closed? Can, tell, can someone tell me if it's yes or no? I guess I have to open my eyes. Yes or no? No, I don't think you closed your eyes, Phantom. No, I think you were cheating. I think you were watching. Well, I have to say, this is something I can't ask of Phantom because she doesn't have an eyelid. She technically can't close her eyes. So she's going to be watching us while we have our eyes closed and wondering what we're doing. Maybe she's a little jealous because she doesn't have any of those eyelids. Instead, what these guys have is something called an eye cap. So it looks like a modified scale. And the only time that we actually see this eye cap is when they shed. So what happens is that eye cap will get really cloudy and then it will shed with the rest of her skin. And I thought it would be really cool for to put it down for a second to show you one of Phantom's old beds. This is one of them. And let me show you that eye cap so you guys can see what I mean. There you go. You see her eyes? That's the eye cap. And then the rest of her shed is too long for me to show in one. So that's the old shed of Phantom. So these guys will shed their entire skin in one go. They go right from the mouth. You can see there's the mouth. And it's unraveled almost like a sock. She pulls it off her entire body. There we go. And you can see the tail right here. And this is something that snakes and a lot of reptiles will do. They'll shed their skin every so often. And this is just to get rid of that extra outer layer, the layer that might have gone a little bit dirty. Maybe there's some bugs, some parasites, and it gets rid of all of that. So something they slough off that old skin, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to see, uh, check it out if there's any other questions. I saw a question. Ooh, let me try and handle this one. I saw Lisa ask, that was a good question, is she common in the wild? A great question, Lisa, because unfortunately, they are not very common in the wild. They're pretty rare to find, not just because they're so dark and hard to spot, but unfortunately, they are threatened in the U.S. There's a lot of things that we're doing, especially building homes, taking over a lot of their natural habitat. So it's a big problem for these guys in the state. And one of the best things we can do to actually help these guys is make sure that we're cleaning up our environment because these guys are affected by what we find in there. So anytime you see some plastic, it's a really good idea to safely clean up the garbage that we have in our environment so hopefully these animals don't encounter it in the wild as well. Now I think the phantom is a pretty cool one and there's one last fact I want to tell you before we head off and I'm going to get her up and close and let's see if we can show her off because phantom is one of the best diggers. She has this really thick, robust scale right on the tip of her nose because these guys are great at burrowing. So what they will do is they actually make these nests underneath the ground and they will dig out using that thick and scale. So something unusual that you don't really see on a lot of snakes is that thick scale right at the front. So she's going to burrow down and she will stay underground all night and even during the hottest parts of the day. So stay under there, that way she can stay nice and safe and not get too overheated during that time. And I think that's one of the coolest things because there's not many snakes that have that feature. Nice close up, Miss Phantom, I love it. We're showing it off. Our last little to look at Miss Phantom before I get Earth Ranger Bailey to come out and tell us a little bit about what we can do to protect animals. So thank you guys so much for joining us. From Sarah and Phantom, we're going to say thank you, and we're going to pass it on to Earth Ranger Bailey. Bye bye. All right, hello everyone. So my name is Bailey, and that was some incredible information from Sarah and our ambassador Phantom. Now I have to admit, I didn't know a ton about the black pine snake before I met Phantom, and learning about new animals is always such an incredible experience. Now, if you love animals as much as I do, you should definitely check out the Earth Rangers app. Now, the Earth Rangers app is where you can go to save animals. And the best thing about it is that it's completely free to join. You can either download it from either Google Play or the Apple App Store. Now, once you sign up as an Earth Ranger, 
He actually sends you his very own membership card in the mail. So it'll have your name on it and everything, which I think is pretty incredible, and you can show it off to all of your friends. Hopefully, he'll also become an Earth Ranger and join you. Now, when you're an Earth Ranger, a really awesome thing is to complete missions. Now, these missions will be different things that you can do to help you earn points. You can level up and get different things for your avatar as you journey through Canada's landscape. Now, what's really great about the app is not only can you use it inside, but it's going to take you outside, into your very own backyard, into your local environment, which is really important to see the natural world around us. Another thing we have going on right now at Earth Rangers is our Eco Activities Challenge. So if you complete some of those Eco Activities and missions, if you post a picture of it and tag us, you uh, kind of get a chance to win a special Eco Surprise. So if you want further information on that, definitely check out the video description below. Now, unfortunately, that's almost all from us today. But thank you again to Honda, who is our sponsor for allowing us to come to you live from our Earth Ranger Center. And for those of you still sticking around, we have a special code for you. So the code right now is FDJULY. So F-D-J-U-L-Y. You plug that into your Earth Rangers app, you will get either some special bonus points or maybe something new for your avatar. Now, unfortunately, that is all from us today, but make sure you log back in, check us out on Thursday, where you'll be meeting one more animal ambassador. Bye for now.